Hi everyone. Good to see you all. Welcome to today's co-creative meditation. I feel there is so much excitement already in the field before we gathered. I feel our guides are really happy to um, actually bring about what is needed at this now moment. Uh, I have written a very short introduction to our um today's meditation and and i wrote that the november energies are really uh tough they're turbulent um we are um actually witnessing a higher and higher level levels of light coming into our cellular structures and we are also noticing that if we are um resisting and the ego structure is an embodied resistance. So if we are resisting uh, th that light, which is also um, a coming into more and more of your Christ, Christed Sophia being, then um, a looping occurs. And this looping could be in uh, situations you meet outside of you or uh, just thought patterns that are constantly looping within uh, your mind. And uh, today I'd like to very short, uh, shortly address um, sovereignty versus codependency. And I don't really harp on how humanity had dropped uh, in consciousness uh, for the past 36,000 years or more. And um, the more we have dropped, we are only um, adhering uh, reality to the material realm, which is actually the, the least of our the least what what's real i'm not saying it's not real but it is not all there is and today i'd like to bring about a buddhist teaching of aspects that are keeping us attached to um codependency thus fear and know that the ego structure is addicted to fear. And today I'm going to also plug into our circle of empowerment. And I have to reference this from the Sophia code because I unintentionally actually always did it. Um, I didn't um, define it as such. So it is not my wording, the circle of empowerment. But I found it's being very, very uh, powerful, the way we're going to do it. But first, we're going to address the addiction to fear, which is our codependency. So when we are codependent, we are giving our power away. We either freeze or um, fight, or fawn, or please. So all of these aspects um, are there in our lives, and especially if you are um, a female embodiment here on this planet, you must be very much aware of your tendencies of pleasing, fawning, and all of these tendencies are just there to reflect your untruth. And that is codependency. I am dependent on the outside world to feel safe, to be accepted, to stay alive. Thus, uh, I have to please and fawn. Fawning is an interesting element of what we do uh, when we feel disempowered. And obviously, the false matrix is 
teaching us very nicely to fawn and give our power away. Now, this is just an ev evolutionary playground here. Planet Earth is an evolutionary playground. And your souls have signed up to come here and to um, evolve. And evolution usually happens through trials and tribulations. Um, and so that you can take this wisdom and then carry it, carry it over to other planets, because um, we are all ascended masters walking here on this planet to uh, a larger or a lesser degree. Now, the aspects that also Buddhism teaches, uh, what are uh, actually looping us into this cycle of codependency is ignorance. So not knowing who you truly are, ignorance, attachment, hatred, arrogance, jealousy, miserliness, doubt, and projections. And if you consider what is um, an antidote to ignorance is direct knowing, but direct knowing never comes from your mind. The mind needs to be um, tamed into your true being. Okay? So true knowing, direct, direct knowing, meaning also you find out as you plunge into all that is, you arrive at direct knowing. It's a very interesting. What is an antidote to attachment? An antidote to attachment is self-love. And self-love also comes from knowing who the self is. <laughs> or it's, not, it's not actually a who. And what is an antidote to hatred? Very interesting again, self-forgiveness, forgiving the self, because um, interestingly, our psych psychology, our subconscious mind cannot distinguish between you as an ego construct and others. It's very interesting. So if you have hatred towards somebody that's an automatic imposition of hatred onto yourself. Arrogance. Arrogance, I am uh, meeting arrogance more and more as an academic on my path, uh, thinking I know, thinking that I have the authority to say what is right. So what is an antidote to arrogance is, again, self-knowing. Because once you really know who you truly are, there's absolutely no need for arrogance. Arrogance comes from feeling lesser, feeling not good enough. Jealousy. The antidote to jealousy is self-communion, communing with who you truly are. So the antidote is actually the same to all of them. Miserliness is prosperity. The antidote to miserliness is prosperity. And what is prosperity is truly plugging into this uh, field of your limitlessness. Doubt, what is the antidote to doubt is faith. But again, faith just arises from the truth of your being so that you're not chasing a future. Yeah, you just know. And I would equate faith with, with, with an aspect of knowing, just knowing and trusting that your own innocence, the innocence, the light of your being 
will actually know moment to moment what you need. And this is very interesting, projections. What is an antidote to projections? And I find that it is the hardest to catch our projections. When we are blaming another, it's usually a projection. We're projecting an element of ourselves that has had been disowned and repressed into the subconscious. And then we are playing out this story with another. And the antidote to projections is awareness and omniscient. So that's also um, in, in uh, Vedic uh, philosophy, I would call that discernment. Yeah, discernment going into your um, clear seeing and discernment comes actually through the embodiment of your higher self. That's very important. Um, now we're going to establish the circle of empowerment. I once again got this from the Sophia Code. I'm not going to actually do it the way the writer or the channel herself uh, is doing it because I've been doing it my way. Uh, for the longest time, I just didn't um, emphasize it. I didn't talk about it, but I find this very useful. So you see, when you are on your path of evolution and we all are here because we are sharing this divine spark of our embodiment. And when you, as this very, very individuated, beautiful, actually divine spark, who, who had come here to share its light with, with um, let's say, the humanity in this case, then you're going to, to teach from your own light. And when you feel that teaching is resonating with other teachings that had been delivered, then it's actually a very, very uh, blessed moment because it feels like, yes, there is one truth, there is one light, um, and it can be manifest in, in so many myriad of, of ways. And, and this is why I'm, I'm just saying I resonate with the Sophia Code. And it's a book, and it's teaching um, the, it's a codex, actually, she calls it a codex of the divine feminine uh, spark teachings, okay? It's very good. Uh, I would actually recommend uh, everybody to, to look into it. It's not only for uh, females. It's equally uh, empowering for, for all of humanity. Okay, so let us just wind down. Our intention today as we are co-creating in this very powerful holographic container a star portal, our intention is to clear the densified looping cellular data in our multidimensional bodies. And I will specifically address the data connected to enslavement fear, and especially the fear of your divinity, embodying your divinity and fearing to embody it. Once again, I have addressed the opposite to sovereignty, which is codependency. Sovereignty is your embodiment of who you truly are. It is the highest love. 
of creation of mother, father, God. As we are circulating our soul flame, envision this beautiful fire, fire burning in the center of our circle. As we are co-joining from all over the world, And we are remembering why we came here for. As divine embodiments of the highest will. Know that our body avatars are actually embodiments of that light that needs to be anchored here on this planet at this time. So ascension is also the process of ascension in, through, and by the body. Otherwise, what are you ascending anyway? Other parts of you are already ascended. Plug into your pranic channel. We're going to strengthen the pranic channel of this group hologram. And just envision as you are this individuated pillar of light. We are allowing our higher hearts at the top of the sternum to start pulsating this light and sound frequency of your very unique individuated seed atom. And this seed atom is connected upwards through your soul star, through the stellar gateway, through Alcyon, the universal central sun, to source. And then now we are moving into our closer embodiment from the individuated seed atom from your higher heart, top of your sternum. You're moving down through your tailbone, feeling into the roots through your feet, dropping into the heart of Mother Gaia. Terra. Wonderful. This is that embodiment of the Christed being that Mother Earth is. Mother Earth is your body. That is the Anamaya Kosh, the food body. But what is food? It's densified light. So 
So just feel that we've anchored our heart into the heart of Mother Gaia. Beautiful. Just feel the magnificence because she is a multidimensional Christ it's Sophia being. Christ it's Sophia just means that there is the masculine and feminine polarity of the highest embodiment of form. So know that humanity is moving towards Christed Sophia embodiment. The Christed Sophia embodiment is an ascended master mastery that is the pure embodiment of the service to other. That is the Christed Sophia embodiment. From your own pillar of light, intend, I connect to my higher self. The higher self is a more individuated embodiment of your soul. And the first step on this pathless path is to discern the messages of your higher self. So we connect to our higher selves. And then now we are moving into the circle of empowerment. And we're plugging our higher selves into the oversoul paradigm. Every single higher self belongs to an oversoul that is a conglomerate of ascended master's, master's paradigm, which you could call a quality of light a quality of God's emanation, a flame. And as you are an individuated pillar of light, just start envisioning a circle around you, which is eight feet wide circle of light and just feel that your heart is drawing so the circumference is eight feet wide the center is your heart the seed atom and then we're moving into the Guru Loka. Loka is a space. It is a space in the multiverse. Inhabited by ascended masters. And know that there are different Lokas or spaces in the multiverse. And here we are ascended masters in training. So imagine that the Guru Loka 
the Ascended Master realm is just a realm where Ascended Masters had already graduated from training. They had perfected the service to other embodiment. Know that the only truth to you is your love. There's no other truth to you. And that love, when it's truly embodied, it's a being, it's not an emotion, then that love just wants to share itself. There's no other purpose to it. And we've come here to create this heavenly realm, a heavenly loka realm on earth. When the light is saturated, densified, we come and anchor a higher dimensional frequency in lower lokas, so that the universal laws are being returned to. They reverberate through your cells, through your cellular matrices, and create the new earth paradigm. <laughs> and the Ascended Masters are here to remind you of your divine genome or seed atom, which is subatomic, which is made up of this unique resonance of sound and light. Zoom from your center, which is the heart, which is the higher self, which is the soul. And then now we're connecting to our oversoul. And you're going to, in this session, you can intend to connect to the ascended master of your resonance. Maybe you already know who that is, it's not really a who, it's, it's a consciousness that is part of your multidimensional hologram. <laughs> Maybe some of us belong to the same. So as you created this wider circle, around you and you're feeling you, the center of your heart at the back side, the seed atom, pulsating, you're actually pulsating into all of these qualities of masters that we're going to call in. And I'm going to call in a few and you call in some others that you are connecting with. So I'm going to call in first of all, Hmm. Isis, this is very much the same limit, lineage of the embodied Sophia Christed divine feminine polarity. Isis, Hathor, Hathor was Isis's teacher, calling in. Mary, Mother Mary, the goddess of the thousand roses. And then Mary was the teacher of Magdalena or Miriam of Magdala. Hmm. We call on Yeshua, the twin flame of 
Magdalena or Miriam. I call on to Green Tara. Green Tara is a beautiful embodiment of the divine feminine who is accompanied with the Dakinis. They are angelic spirits of strength, divine feminine strength, the wrathful divine. I would call them the aspect of Mother Kali from Hinduism. But they teach us to own our power, own our sovereignty. The Bodhisattva Tara, the green Tara, She's teaching you to step into your abundance, but the abundance of your true being, which is abundance. I feel that there is a huge resonance in this group. Beautiful, beautiful. Remember, remember. And once you're connecting to the to one or two or three ascended master lineage, your evolution is ha actually made faster, made more embodied. And you all have aspects of these ascended masters. And finally, I call in Mahavatar Babaji who is responsible for the atomic or soul evolution of humanity. And just make an intention to plug into the Guru Loka. This is the Guru Loka of the Ascended Master realm. And connect your higher self to your vein. This would be called uh, in Hinduism a parampara, which is a lineage of school. But we are actually doing it real time. We are not doing it through scripture. We are doing it through living word. Nothing matters. Only the living embodied word which is the law of light, law of light. And now merge deeper into the seed atom of your heart. You're co connected with your higher self. The higher self is connected to the over soul, which is a part of the guru loka. And I would also call this loka or space your solar rishi self. Feel how, first of all, the pillar of light that you embody to anchor the Christ it's Sophia flame on this planet is being flooded by this effervescent crystalline white golden light. Do you feel how now this light is being multiplied infinitesimally by our calling in the Ascended Masters. They are all part. Of this Sophia Christed light. 
and just feel that you are receiving this light from your crown. There is the waterfall of light. the fire light codes of sacred geometry clearing your hologram and feel that your pranic channel starts spinning. The pranic channel is your spine and your crown through your legs, tailbone legs out back into the earth. So the channel starts spinning clockwise and its spin rate is faster and faster. And I'm going to adjust it to your nervous system needs. Just feel that the pranic channel is the living fire, the living photonic light fire of your soul and asking the soul to actually embody deeper and deeper into this vessel. The light of your soul, the wisdom of your soul, the love of your soul, the soul. And just feel imminently that your soul is boundless. Know that your soul is a spark of divinity that is birthed from the womb of Sophia, which is the mother. Know that at the center of your See that um, is the great womb of mother, the great dark womb of Sophia. And this womb, just like your womb, if you are a female embodiment, is dark. It is a, a place of emanation. Get accustomed to the darkness, the enveloping darkness of the womb. And this womb is actually the pure potentiality of all there is. It is that birthing place. Know that it's the same birthing place. Present at your seed atom, the center of your heart, Hridayam. as the source of all there is. Just feel how powerful that is. And ascended masters, the green Tara, we call her forth, green Tara, green Tara and her Dakinis with their fiery tongues, with their fiery chakra emanations. They are the most ferocious emanations of Mother Shakti. And I'm just asking now all of us to be flooded from the heart of this beautiful, magnificent Mother Earth. Feel this golden, red flaming Shakti power coming up from the center of this planet through your 
feet. The feet chakra starts spinning, 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 and they start connecting to this vitality, the fiery vitality of Mother Shakti. Know that the Shiva element <laughs> is that element which sparks the womb of inert, all-encompassing, dark field of pure potentiality into creation. It is so magnificent. And that is your soul being birthed through the multiversal womb all the way into your individuated avataric embodiment. Green Tara is teaching us to receive the boon, the blessing of Mother Earth is Shakti. Feel that your feet are activated, the feet chakras, and then we are going up through the calves into the knees. We're receiving pure initiation of vital Shakti force. Why? Because we are canceling out the inverted false three matrix seal codings in your cellular data, you have to give it permission. I am <laughs> the embodiment of the Christ, it's Sophia consciousness of pure light. The highest love, the wisdom and the will of purity. So at once, as we're going through the body hologram, evoking the Shakti power, connecting your own Shakti power with Mother Earth, and then you're reverberating it through your multidimensional hologram, you're giving permission to cancel, delete, all the inversions in this hologram that are not in alignment with your highest timeline, with your soul embodiment, with your oneness, with Mother, Father, God. There are no degrees of separation. Remember, there are no degrees of separation. The illusion of your separation is an evolutionary training ground. And the name of the game is that you awaken on a cellular level, meaning you are making form conscious to the fact, actually it's not a fact, it's a, to the reality of who you truly are. 
knowing that form is holy and the formless is holy. Form is holy and the formless is holy. As we are receiving this Shakti force from the calves into the knees, we're activating the knee chakras at the back side of the knees. Visualize this golden red fire. It's like the tongue of Mother Kali. The tongue is actually canceling out, deleting all of the false imprinting in your cellular matrix. Thus, we are now recuperating the blueprint of your divine Christed Sophia embodiment. That takes courage. And that is sovereignty. You do not know sovereignty until you deconstruct, delete, clear the inversions, miasma, overlays, implants, cords, cordings, hooks to anything known and unknown, conscious or subconscious, from any timeline, lifetime, parallel timeline, here and now, that is not of the law of the light. And no, that the law of light teaches you that you are the divine emanation of all that is. The divine beauty, wisdom, truth, and love of the Christ that Sophia. Know that the Christ that Sophia ray is white, crystalline. Diamond, silvery, golden, plasma. Know that this quality of emanation is birthed from the great void, the great darkness, void, the womb of the mother. Feel how, as this process of initiation is taking place, you feel held, supported, healed, initiated into your highest knowing. Start honoring your body avatar going into your thighs. The tailbone. And if you're feeling that your thoughts are running amok, allow them, cradle them. If your energies are turbulent, be that space of allowing. This is the new technology of the Kundalini transmission. Mother Shakti
is igniting its remembrance through your cellular memory. Notice that from the tailbone, this is the root chakra. The root chakra is being filled. This connectedness to the plane of the earth is being filled with this golden red fire of the mother. Clearing out any and all fear programming, addiction to fear, addiction to limitation, addiction to manipulation. Being manipulated and manipulating, believing that you do not deserve. Clear, deleted from the system. Just stay here for a second. Stay, stay, stay as this whirling vortex of the mother is clearing the, this space. Just feel how the fire, the Shakti fire, this is also part of your soul fire. But this is golden red. It's shooting up now all the way through your spine into your crown. And we're connecting the root with the crown. And right now, We are removing any and all ancestral programming of addiction to pain. We are also removing the fear to embody our highest divinity. We call in Isis, who teaches us that there is no more time to keep playing small. We are the embodiments of light divine perfection. And we are now connecting. Feel the root and the crown. Connect it through your pranic channel, your spine. We're connected to the highest creation, moment to moment. Igniting this crystalline golden seed atom removing any and all interference patterns collapsing any and all false 3D matrixial structures in your hologram if you give permission The false matrix that had been kept alive through ancestral memory. I now command this to be deleted, removed. Thank you. Feel your heart. I am... the embodiment of the law of light. I am sovereign. I am divine. I am light. I am free.
birthing of the Christ at Sophia consciousness. In every single cell of your body. Visualize now every single cell being a third eye. Every single cell having this eye, the all seeing eye, acting as a multi dimensional, all knowing, all seeing, all feeling embodiment. We can also invite the Sophia dragons <coughs> you can connect to your own dragon. They usually come in different light if you're called to. They are the embodiments of <coughs> angelic forces. And they're called to assist humanity in times of great transition, where they need to transit from density into the light, following the law of light. <laughs> We can invite these dragons to clear our pranic channels. I'm asking them to clear our co-joint holographic channel right now that we've created. And also our individual channels removing, I'm asking them to remove any and all karmic blocks or the grantees. And all you need to say is, I allow and I am open. Because nothing is done without your free will. Nothing. I allow the grantee to be cleared from my root chakra. The grantee is a karmic block. I allow the grantee to be cleared from my sacral chakra. Feel the shakti rising now from the root into the sacral your womb space, your divine womb space, and hara space for men. Womb and hara, clearing powerfully, removing any and all. Imprinting, DNA imprinting of any and all partners we had from any lifetime timeline parallel timeline here and now so it is remove cancel delete i am hearing that most of the inversion happened because of our inverted sexual energy it's just feel as if mother shakti is actually drawing you upward as if there's this energy that from the root, somebody is actually trying to lift you from the root through the sacral, at least to the sacral. They're lifting, lifting your inner power, this inner creative force. They're lifting it up, merging through any and all karmic patterning. And then we are moving into the solar plexus saying, I hereby ask to remove any and all karmic blocks from my solar plexus. Removing any cords, hooks, cordings to any person, thing, contract, that you've ever established consciously or unconsciously from any timeline, lifetime, here and now. Feel that you're like being lifted through this pranic channel. Somebody's lifting, very, very adamantly lifting all of this beautiful Shakti power into the solar plexus. 
activating the fire of inner power. Golden red Shakti power. As you exhale, you exhale into the Guru Loka extended circle and intend to harmonize your individual power with the highest will. Allow your stomach to relax. And in this relaxed, embodied, conscious awareness, just say, thy will be done. Meaning you're aligning, you're giving, permission to your higher self and over soul to take the reins. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You see, this is the path to sovereignty. Sovereignty can never be attained from the limited personal ego self. We're not demonizing that aspect, but it needs to be re-embodied by the soul, meaning the soul's wisdom, the soul's love, the soul's beauty, the soul's creation permeates all of the layers of your psychodynamic being. The mental, emotional body is now being reconfigured. Manomaya Kosh. I ask for the reconfiguration of the Mano Maya Kosh. That's a layer to your body. Allow now, if you dare to, to flood your pain body with light. The pain body is usually all of the dis avowed, rejected parts of your psyche that you have deemed as powerless, unnecessary, dangerous because you were told so by your parents or educators or society. So right now I'm calling for the soul retrieval all of the parts of the soul that had been splintered off through trauma, experiences. Notice that your heart is like a magnet and light fragments are now being magnetized to your heart. Just visualize this, very important. Returning and completing your hologram. Usually sound is what is calling back these fragments. Oh. 
It's like your divine self is calling, singing yourself back into wholeness. Babaji said this now. Cutting the mirage, the illusion of fragmentation. Wiping it out. If you do not feel anything, you will feel that there is this great peace right now in our circle. So much peace. So much silence and embodiment. Just feel again into the seed atom of your heart and feel that this is the intelligence of your heart is spiraling out from the void, from the womb of creation. And it is pregnant with limitless possibilities and notice that the light frequency of your heart is now spiraling outward from the womb. And it's collapsing all of the chakras into itself. So it's moving in wider and wider concentric circles, uniting the solar plexus with the throat. Power and divine wisdom, hearing the wisdom of your higher self. Collapsing the third eye with the sacral chakra. All knowing, all seeing, all aware, limitless expression and creation. Collapsing the crown with the root. the highest embodiment of the Christ at Sophia, consciousness through this avatar body. And just feel that you're being flooded with the highest vibration of this crystalline golden white light. All of the cells are reverberating this luminous intelligence of sound and light, sacred geometry. Activating the Christ at Sophia consciousness that is now harmonizing this body hologram, removing the last remnants of inversions, recordings that are maybe still reverberating as the false 3D matrix 
remove, cancel, delete. And just see actually that every single cell once again is opening its eye. Activating the 12 strand DNA, 24 strand DNA. So it is. And every single time you take a breath from now on, you're reminded of your vitality, divinity, sovereignty, and divine creative power. Whether it be during waking state or sleeping, or the state of Turiya, which is beyond the other states. Turiya is the knowing that you are source. Form is holy. Formless is holy. Know that your journey is about awakening in life. Your journey is awakening in life. What did Yeshua teach us? Eternal life. And eternal life is your Christ, it's Sophia embodiment. Awakening in life. Use your life as the manifestation of the divine. This is what we need at this time so that others are reminded of their divinity, of their magnificence and grace. The activations are very strong. I hereby command to ask to download the pure blueprint of our sovereign light being, the knowing embodiment of our sovereign being as light. And this is called ask and you shall receive. But you can only ask from the purity that you are. The asking is from the purity of your true being. Oh. 
I think the presence of our higher selves, our embodiment, whether you're here live or joining at the next now moment, quantum, eternity allows this transmission to be reverberating endlessly as it is aligned with the law of light. I am being asked to say that you may do this. Meditation over again, if you feel called to, to be reminded, stabilized in your own light. The divine genome of your Christ, it's Sophia being. Creation is always seeking to transform all of itself into its highest resonance, its highest light. It enacts this pulsation, moves away from the light into darkness, and from darkness it moves back into the light. That is what you call ascension and descension, where light plays a hide and seek. That's descension. And then it finds itself, and then everything is transformed. into the self, to the fire of the self. And hereby I ask you to look at your identification. <laughs> Is this process really personal? Look at it. Is this process really personal? It feels like it, but none of it is personal. May all beings find and dissolve in the fire of the self. So it is. <laughs>